they, in, they include they include heat. Greetings and good morning. We welcome you to worship. Good to see everyone. We have a few reminders to share with you, and we'll start with Jennifer Jennings. So I just wanted to remind our children and families that Wednesday night activities start back this coming Wednesday. Um, we will start at 545 with Children's Choir with Miss Vicki, and then move to uh, Mission Friends and Kids on Mission right after that. Um, so you should have a letter that came to you in the mail, parents, about that um, with more details there. Um, just a few other reminders for the children's ministry, and then I have a few reminders for adults. Um, our Lent breakfast is going to be February 19th, um, so we hope to see you there at 9 o'clock in the fellowship hall, maybe. Um, <laughs> details are coming about that. And then we're doing a movie night not this Friday, but the next Friday in the Fellowship Hall, January 27th. Um, so we look forward to seeing you there. Also wanted to let you know that um, Mary January 25th to do uh, part two of the Sacred Salt Retreat that she did in October for us. Um, it's an, I just realized I'm, the microphone wasn't on the whole time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so sorry about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So um, Mary Little Apicella will be back um, on um, February 25th to do part two of her uh, Sacred Salt Retreat. She did part one back in October. Um, it was on the theme of Advent. So this time it's going to be on the theme of Lent. Um, you don't have to do any sort of aerobics or gymnastics or anything else like that. You can have very limited mobility and still participate, but it is an exercise retreat. So what we'll be doing is we'll be reading um, scripture passages that go along with Lent and then doing some movement and exercises that go along with those scripture passages. Um, it's for folks of any level and any capability to be able to do. So we hope to see you there for that um, as well. And then um, our blessing box on outside the Child Care Center entrance is in need of donations. So if you could bring donations, canned goods that have, um, you know, pop tops that don't require a can opener, things that you can eat that don't need to be heated up or have extra like water or a stove or microwave, you know, whatever, things like that. If you need some suggestions, um, I'm happy to offer some. You can just put those donations in the blessing box. It's right it's attached to um, the little enclosure where our dumpster is. Good morning. Since it's January, it's time for the Saints Alive to get back together for their monthly luncheon. We'll be doing that this Tuesday at noon in the Fellowship Hall. Our meal this time is going to be soups, stews, sandwiches, and sides. Uh, and the committee did not pre-arrange any of those things, so you're welcome to bring Anything on that, uh, anything on that list. For our program, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a show and tell this time. We're going to invite you to bring your favorite or a funny Christmas gift that you received this Christmas uh, to share with the group, why it made you laugh or why it touched your heart. So I hope you will come on Tuesday at noon and join us. This Wednesday, we do relaunch our Wednesday night ministries with supper at 5.15. Suppers are catered by Countryside, and you can contact the church office to get on that reservation list. Uh, or if you're on the permanent list and need to adjust that, you can always do that Tuesday by noon. We'll be offering two small groups for adults this semester. The first is one that I'm organizing um, called From Property to Profits, Feminist and Womanist Approaches to Scripture. Now, if you're not familiar with what feminist and womanist approaches to reading scripture are, that's okay. That's why we're doing this class. 
we want you to come and, and learn with us. Uh, it will be a, a time of co-journeying through some scripture passages with fresh eyes. I'll be starting that off with an introduction this week, um, and then each of the next four weeks, we'll have a special guest who will come and facilitate that. Um, Ruth Wakefield, Donna Shook, Jennifer Jennings, and Heather Anderson are each going to be taking a week um, working with a passage as we co-journey through that. The second class is one that Scott is leading. It will be the Gospel of Matthew, uh, part one. He'll be in the Blanton Family Ministry Center doing a traditional Bible study, going through as we learn about the book of Matthew. So I hope you will come. Uh, those classes are from 6 to 6.45 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Again, uh, welcome. I do have one other reminder to share with you. Our Belize team is gearing up for Return to Belize. This will be the first, first mission trip to Belize since um, February 2020. And then everything changed. So we're going back, um, good sized group, and we're gearing up for that. We're going to have a team meeting next Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, so that's the 22nd, I think. Is that the 22nd? That's the 22nd. <laughs> Sunday, uh, January 22nd, Belize team meeting, 3 o'clock. Welcome to everyone. If you're uh, with us at home, I uh, hope you're connecting with us in, in some level. We want to want to be in ministry with you and uh, let us know who you are if you if you're not connected already by calling the church office or sending an email or posting through our live stream and we do welcome all of you who are here in the sanctuary and uh, especially welcome our guests we'd love to hear from you as well there are guest information cards in the views in front of you you can fill that out and drop it in an offering plate or hand it to one of us pastors or an usher as you depart the sanctuary we welcome you let's Prepare ourselves now for the worship of God. Join me in our call to worship. In the very beginning, God separated the darkness and the light. God called the light day and the darkness God called night. We were once people who dwelled in darkness, but God has given us the true light in Jesus Christ. God has blessed us and adopted us as his own beloved children, daughters and sons, claimed in the sacred sign of baptism. Water of baptism brings to us healing and reconciliation. It is a symbol of nourishment and cleansing. This day we remember Jesus' baptism. As we hear the story of Jesus' baptism, let us be reminded of our own baptisms and our own adoption by God as his beloved children. Let us celebrate the joyous connection we have to Almighty God 
our Father in heaven. Let's pray together. God of majesty and light, you hold the whole world in your hand. So we give you our great praise that in Jesus Christ all people may see your glory. We thank you for revealing Jesus to be your son and for claiming our lives in baptism to be his glad disciples. By your spirit, may peace descend upon us that we may follow Christ with grateful hearts. Take us all we have and all that we are to be useful in your service. God of all nations, in the gracious name of Jesus Christ, your Son, by the power of your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee, oh, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw God's spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heavens said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us join together now in our litany of renewal. Following a star, following God's love, following a call, a nudge, 
a journey of faith for our lives. Help us, O oh God, in the decisions we make every day, in the pegs or values that we decide to hang our life on, that reflect your love and goodness in our lives and in our world. In recognition of time's movement forward and the reality of a new year, in remembrance of Jesus' baptism and our own, we pledge to follow the teachings of Jesus in our lives, to wrestle with the meaning of scripture and try to live out this meaning each day in our conversations with family, with the people we meet, with the strangers we encounter, and with the quiet conversations we have within ourselves every day. We realize that we cannot do this on our own that we are dependent on God's love and grace in our lives, so to love the other whom we meet along life's path. Help us to learn what it means to be a witness, to voice the gospel among all those with whom we share this world, the birds of the air, the fish of the seas, the green grass, the animals, and the soil from which life is given and all the peoples of the earth, those close to us at home, and those far away from us, even across the globe. By your grace, triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. As we enter into this time of prayer, I invite you to take out your purple bulletin insert um, for us to go over some joys and concerns this morning. We want to remember um, in prayer Debbie Whittemore and her family on the death of her mother, Eloise Randolph. Um, a memorial service for Eloise will be held here at First Baptist in a couple of weeks. We also want to remember in prayer Terry Childers. Terry is going to be having surgery on Thursday. Um, we want to remember in prayer John Gooch, father of Renee McKinney, who is also having surgery on Thursday, as well as Rick. Um, we want to remember baby Winston, who is the grandson of Jeff and Sandy Knox. He was born prematurely and is at Baptist Hospital. Um, just a couple of, or one correction to the joys and concerns list, Don Buchanan is home from the VA hospital, um, and we rejoice that uh, Lenny Parker is also home from rehab. Um, lastly, Gail Bailey mentioned to remember in prayer Donna Gardner, whose uh, father died unexpectedly. Are there are any other joys and concerns that need to be mentioned aloud this morning. Jeff. 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 Okay. We want to remember in prayer uh, Liza's brother in law, Jeff Holmes, who is undergoing chemo treatment. Are there any others? Then let's pray. <clears throat> Gracious and loving God, when we humble ourselves in prayer, we know that you hear us. When we boldly approach the throne of grace, we are confident that you welcome us. It's hard to believe that you, the creator of the universe and everything in it, would be mindful of your creation, so mindful that you actively seek a relationship with us. We are burdened by the illness and pain and suffering around us. 
We are weary of the violence and vitriol we encounter in the news. We confront oppression and suffering and injustice each day until it seems like it's too pervasive to bear. We struggle with our own grief, our own illness, our own silent pain. And yet we know that you are a God of comfort, a God who draws us close to you, a God who offers hope and peace. You're a God who understands our suffering, who comes alongside us in our suffering, and you offer us a way forward out of the darkness and into your marvelous light. We rejoice in your grace and your love poured out for us in your son, Jesus Christ. We rest in the promise that we are your beloved children and that you are pleased with us, not because of what we've done or because of what we've left undone, not because of what we've said, or because of what we've left unsaid, but simply because we are yours, and being yours makes us enough. We are so glad to be yours. May the words in our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you now and always. Amen.
They had a retreat Friday night and Saturday. Sounds like it was a spirited retreat. <laughs> yes, our scripture lesson today is the baptism of Jesus. Over the years, I've, I've had the privilege of baptizing a number of people. Many have been children, 9, 10, 12 years old, a few younger than that. A few were so small we needed to put a, a couple of cinder blocks in the baptistry so that they could see and they could be seen. But then there were those big, tall teenagers. Many of them had already outpaced my stature. I found out quickly you have to make room in the baptistry for all that height. Several times I've, I've baptized grown adults, young adults, middle-aged adults, senior adults. One, one of the first people I baptized was somewhere around 75 years old. He was a, a small, slight man, a bit frail, not in the best of health. He'd never made a profession of faith in Jesus Christ before. Never been baptized, never been a member of a church. The day of his baptism, that was a good day. A few, a few years ago, I heard that he had passed away, gone on to be with the Lord. Whenever someone approaches me about baptism, we, we tend to talk about it what it means, how it's done, and, and inevitably I ask various questions that all come down to basically one question. Why now? What brings you to this moment, to this big step of faith? What's going on in your life? Why now? As you might expect, the answers to that question vary. I've seen a person who was stoic and well-reasoned suddenly become overcome with emotion. With sniffles and tears, he jumped into the waters of baptism, overcome with passion never before felt. I've seen people self-confident and self-assured, the kind of people who thought they had it all figured out. They suddenly come forward to be baptized with, with a new sense of humility, a new sense of need, a Tremendous sense of thanksgiving as they rise out of the waters. I've seen teenagers who otherwise seem pretty clueless and uncertain about life become laser focused on what's most important in life. They enter the waters of baptism with, with confidence, with heads held high, with a new sense of identity and purpose. I've seen kids and adults get ready for baptism with, with knocking knees and sweaty hands. They giggle and chatter. It, it's, nerves, it's nervous energy, of course. Who wouldn't be a bit nervous? They enter the baptistry with big eyes and with big, deep breaths. Under the water they go, and they come up relieved and excited, ready to conquer the world. And yes, I've seen some baptismal candidates that are just simply at peace with the moment and the experience. It's a happy day. It's a good day. It's a, a day long awaited. With calm reassurance and teethy smiles, they enter the waters as if life's biggest adventure is about to begin. For, for me, at, at nine years old, I was that kid who, who knew it was time but couldn't quite explain why it was time. I don't know that I had a real clear answer if you had asked me. I would have said something like, I believe in Jesus. I want to be a faithful follower of Jesus. I want to tell the church family that I love Jesus. But also, the fact was, a number of my friends had just gotten baptized. Five of them, I believe it was. And also my family had just moved. It was a time of transition, a, a big time of change. My family was going to join a new church in a new town. So there were some doubts amidst some confidence. I wondered, am I ready? Am I really ready? 
But really, in a sense, that's the same question I, I ask people today. It's the question, the same question. Why now? That's really a good question. That's a good question no matter what your age may be, what your current situation may be. A, a good question if you're 75 years old or 25 years old or 10 years old. You want to be baptized. How long have you been thinking about being baptized? What's going on in your life to bring you to thinking about baptism? Why now? That's really the same question that, that John the Baptist asked Jesus when Jesus came forward that day down by the Jordan. Jesus, of all people, came to John to be baptized. John's baptism was a, was a baptism of repentance. Something that, that Jesus didn't need. Jesus, John didn't want to do it, in fact. He, he protested. Matthew says that, that John tried to prevent Jesus from getting baptized. Jesus, why you? Why now? You shouldn't be baptizing. You should be baptizing me. I shouldn't be baptizing you. And yet, according to Jesus, that's exactly what John had to do. This is God's will. This is the right thing to do. Jesus said to John, here I am. Let's do it. It's interesting. These are the first words Jesus speaks in Matthew's gospel. Let it be so now, for it is proper for us to fulfill all righteousness in this way. And so John submitted to Jesus' request just as Jesus submitted to John's baptism. Jesus went into the Jordan River and, and under the water. He was baptized. And as Jesus rose from the water, according to all four Gospels, God spoke in an audible voice and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus. According to the first the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove. Like a gentle, peaceful dove. And, and then God said, this is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. These lines echo some Old Testament scripture. Psalm 2 and, and Isaiah 42. Psalm 2 is a, is a coronation song for the crowning of a new king. Isaiah 42 is where we find the description of the suffering servant. And now we hear these scripture words spoken over Jesus at his baptism. In that moment, we, we learn a lot about Jesus. Jesus' identity and purpose are declared for all to hear. He's king, he's suffering servant, he's God's beloved, he's equipped and, a power and empowered by the Holy Spirit. In other words, Jesus' baptism was, was his anointing. It was his blessing. It, it was the, the beginning of his ministry and his kingship, the commencing of his work and his reign. If you had any doubts before, now you know exactly who Jesus is and exactly what Jesus is about. Baptism by water and the Holy Spirit makes it clear. Jesus is named and claimed and sent by God. The great reformer Martin Luther often urged Christians to, to make it a, a matter of daily discipline to remember your baptism. That's interesting because in, in, in Luther's day, in, in his church, everyone was baptized as an infant. They weren't like us Baptists. They were all babies when they went under the water and had the name of the triune God spoken over them. And yet still Luther charged them, remember your baptism. How could they remember? They were too little. They were, they were too young to remember. Now Martin Luther practiced this discipline of memory himself. In, in his desk where he worked daily, Luther carved the words, I am baptized. 
It said that, that he would begin each morning by looking at those words. He would even touch his forehead and, and say out loud, I am baptized. Of course, Martin Luther was himself baptized as an infant. So he couldn't recall the moment or the conditions of his baptism. But that wasn't Luther's point. That was never his point. Luther was not concerned so much about the act of baptism, but rather the meaning behind and around baptism. We often think of baptism as something we do. It's something we, we ponder and debate, that, that something that we make a decision about. We come down the aisle, we tell the preacher, we announce our decision to the church. We get baptized and become a, a church member. We, we do all that. And yes, baptism is all that. In, in a sense, baptism is, is something we choose to do out of our own volition. It, it's as the, the word sacrament originally was understood. Sacrament or sacramentum in Latin originally referred to the pledge a soldier made to the emperor. Enjoying the ranks of the Roman legions, a soldier would pledge his loyalty to Caesar. Hail Caesar. Sacramentum. Baptism is like that. It's our act of commitment. It's our pledge. It's our our oath to be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. But even more than that, baptism is, is a passive act of submission. After all, you can't baptize yourself. Even Jesus couldn't baptize himself. But even when John administered the baptism, even when John laid Jesus under the water, even then the actual baptism, the baptism of the Holy Spirit... That was administered by God and God alone. In baptism, God took action. God claimed and named and sent Jesus. Jesus simply received. Baptism is, is a gift. It's a, it's a sign of God's grace upon us. And that's how it is for all of us who enter the waters of baptism. We come with our thoughts and reasons. We come with our experiences and convictions. We, we come making up our minds and expressing our commitments. And yet, finally, we come not because of what we do or what we think, but because of what God does and what God thinks. We submit and receive. And then God does only what God can do, God claims us as his people. God names us as his children. God cherishes us as his, his beloved. And then God sends us out into the world to be his people, his church. Martin Luther, in his discipline of memory, he, he never said, I was baptized. He always said every morning, I am baptized. Present tense, ongoing present tense. Which means baptism isn't once and done, or, or better put, being named and claimed and loved by God isn't once and done. Being baptized is, is an ongoing reality. It's who you are, it's who you are now, it's who you were then, it's, it's who you will be tomorrow and hereafter. For those of us who've relented to Jesus' invitation, who submitted to his baptism, that's who we are. That's what we're about. You are, we are, beloved children of God in whom the Almighty is well pleased. In other words, as Luther put it, you are baptized. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Holy God, you continue to ask us to follow you. At this moment, we follow you by presenting this offering. Please bless it and it multiply it and use it to bring love to the world. Amen. Amen. Go forth in the name of God, remembering who you are, the people of God, the beloved, named and claimed, and sent in God's name. Mm -hmm. 